But before this the god Taldus imitated the features of the gods who were his companions, Kronos, and Dagon, and the rest, and gave form to the sacred characters of the letters. He also devised for Kronos as insignia of royalty four eyes in front and behind but two of them quietly closed, and upon his shoulders four wings, two as spread for flying, and two as folded. And the symbol meant that Kronos could see when asleep, and sleep while waking, and similarly in the case of the wings, that he flew while at rest, and was at rest when flying. But to each of the other gods he gave two wings upon the shoulders, meaning that they accompanied Kronos in his flight. And to Kronos himself again he gave two wings upon his head, one representing the all-ruling mind, and one sensation. And when Kronos came into the south country he gave all Egypt to the god Taldus, that it might be his royal dwelling place. And these things, he says, were recorded first by Sudduk's seven sons, the Kaberi, and their eighth brother Asclepius, as the god Taldus commanded them. All these stories Thabian, who was the very first hierophant of all the Phoenicians from the beginning, allegorized and mixed up with the physical and cosmical phenomena, and delivered to the prophets who celebrated the orgies and inaugurated the mysteries. And they, proposing to increase their vain pretensions from every source, handed them on to their successors and to their foreign visitors. One of these was Isirius the inventor of the three letters, brother of China the first who had his name changed to Phoenix. Then again afterwards he adds, But the Greeks, surpassing all in genius, appropriated most of the earliest stories, and then variously decked them out with ornaments of tragic phrases, and adorned them in every way, with the purpose of charming by the pleasant fables. Hence Hesiod and the celebrated cyclic poets framed theogonies of their own, and battles of the giants, and battles of titans, and castrations, and with these fables, as they traveled about, they conquered and drove out the truth. But our ears having grown up in familiarity with their fictions, and being for long ages preoccupied, guard as a trust the mythology which they received, just as I said at the beginning, and this mythology, being aided by time, has made its hold difficult for us to escape from, so that the truth is thought to be nonsense, and the spurious narrative truth. Let these suffice as quotations from the writings of Sancuniathon, translated by Philo of Byblos, and approved as true by the testimony of Porphyry the philosopher. The same author, in his History of the Jews, further writes thus concerning Kronos. Taldus, whom the Egyptians call Thoith, excelled in wisdom among the Phoenicians, and was the first to rescue the worship of the gods from the ignorance of the vulgar, and arrange it in the order of intelligent experience. Many generations after him a god Sumabellos and Thero, whose name was changed to Yasarthus, brought to light the theology of Taldus which had been hidden and overshadowed by allegories. And soon after he says, It was a custom of the ancients in great crises of danger for the rulers of a city or nation, in order to avert the common ruin, to give up the most beloved of their children for sacrifice as a ransom to the avenging demons, and those who were thus given up were sacrificed with mystic rites.